Today, February 5th, 2008, is one of those big days at the State House in Concord, New Hampshire. One of those target rich environments. Oh, so your department is behind. And liberty activists are gathering to do battle. One typical advocate is Mark Warden. The New Hampshire Liberty Alliance is always happy to help in testimony prep. Fill out a pink card or a blue sheet and let your voice be heard. For example, in front of the House Education Committee, we have CACR 29, providing that the recognition of local control of education in the New Hampshire Constitution is re-established. For the record, I'm Representative Dan Itza. I represent Rockingham County District 9, which is Epping and Fremont. What it is, is looking over the manner in which uh, Part 1, Article 6 was altered in 1968. The, and then jumps directly to uh, the local towns have the uh, right to uh, appoint their own teachers and determine their compensation. My 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 hope is that the hook is uh, is author giving the re giving the legislature the authorization to authorize schools. That would end up. How about the legislative administration committee and HB thirteen fifty four? relative to security in the State House and Legislative Office Building, or prohibiting firearms in the People's House. <laughs> Once again, like last year's SB 44, it appears the committee has misanticipated interest. Next, in front of criminal justice and public safety, is HB 1640, relative to the classification of convicted sex offenders and offenders against children. It substantially expands the type of information that is available to the public. While I personally don't have a dog in this fight in regards to the sex offender registry, as a taxpayer, I'm always concerned about bills with fiscal notes and those that increase bureaucracy or infringe upon individual freedoms. So I think that uh, the money that would, this would cost in the future is money the state would find better uses for with infrastructure, uh, other pressing needs, instead of babysitting ex-cons who have already done their time. Sometimes broad ranging laws like this can capture some of the wrong people in the net. And sometimes there are uh, people that really shouldn't be in there will get caught up in this and then have somebody so a life sentence by being on this list. Uh, I thought it went well. We were a little bit outnumbered and outgunned by uh, the titles on the other side, but I think our arguments held the day. Next up is the State Federal Relations Committee. And although it doesn't pack the force of law, H.R. 23 declaring a supranational government such as a North American Union unconstitutional would certainly send a strong message. I brought this resolution in because I've been greatly disturbed by the articles I've seen in the newspaper promoting a uh, closer and closer, progressively closer union of the countries of North America, Mexico, the United States of America, and Canada. And in looking back at the history of our state and of our nation, I find what's being proposed to be uh, flat un unconstitutional. And certainly there is nothing in the Constitution that authorizes the general government to submit us, its citizens, to other jurisdictions. Therefore, I want to make it clear to the government of the United States of America, that they don't have the authority to delegate our sovereignty, even even the sovereignty that we have delegated to them, because we, we did delegate some of our sovereignty to, to them. They don't have the authority to further delegate it to somebody else without asking us. Um, and, and that just begs the question of if 
Somebody can take any portion of your freedom, whether you've given it to them to use or not, and give it to somebody else without so much as a buy your leave. Are you truly free? You have to draw your line in the sand well before you get there. Otherwise, you, you really don't have the, uh, the right to stand behind it. I just flat don't believe that they can do it without a constitutional amendment, and that would require ratification by three quarters of the states. An uninformed electorate co has co-opted this agenda of betrayal by apathetically ignoring executive, legislative, and judicial compromises of our Constitution. We need to start this 1,000 mile journey with one step to restore the supreme law of the land to be the Constitution of the United States. I believe that we must go back to the wisdom of our founders. Washington said, it is our true policy to steer clear of permanent alliances with any portion of the foreign world. And Jefferson, his statement was, commerce with all nations, alliances with none, should be our motto. And I say down with the North American Union and up with the United States of America. Independence now and independence forever. Any comments, sir? I think I have a ghost of a chance on this one. <laughs> In 1992, I became involved in lobbying and government, and eventually uh, an elected official, because of my concern uh, about DCYF abusing the people of New Hampshire. In 2006, I achieved my goal of restoring due process to DCYF. Not they're ignoring it, but I don't have any direct control over that. But having accomplished that, I was searching for a new purpose, and my purpose has become teaching the people to retake their government.